Hello makers and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial we'll be learning how to make this crochet turtleneck top. I know it looks nip but trust me it's crochet. We're still crocheting in this channel. You will find the pattern to nine different sizes available for free in the description box below. You will also find the materials, all the materials you need the link to them in the description box below. So be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Let's get right into it. So to begin, we're going to be using our 4.5mm hook and we're going to start by making our collar. I've already made, made mine, but I'm about to show you how we're going to get this. So you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook. Make a slip knot. Now, I want mine to be this length and um, you don't, yours doesn't have to be this long. If you want yours to be a bit longer you're gonna have to chain more than we're about to chain or if you want it to be less you're gonna just chain less i chained a total of 40 plus one to achieve this look of course for this um for example i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna chain about 10. so you want to chain 40 for the actual one if that's the amount if that's how long you want it to be so i've got 10 gonna block off that last one right there and add one now the entire thing is gonna be worked up in uh, slip stitches so to do a slip stitch you're gonna identify the second stitch from the hook insert your hook wrap the yarn pull through and just pull through you're just slipping it through pretty much pulling it through and pulling it through just as we would do a slip stitch as the name suggests so you want to do that going down all the way down your 40 rows and once you get to the end which we are almost there we're going to do a chain up of one and we're going to turn and finally there we go and then chain one and return so this is it as for now so to get the ribbed look on um, the knit look that we're getting into make it all stretchy we're going to be working into the back loops the back loops if you hold your work like this you're going to see other v's right here so we're going to go into the back loop the one furthest away from you and you're going to go in there with a slip stitch Just like that and you're gonna do that all the way to the end of your row so I'm just gonna do the rest of the camera and let me meet you once I reach the end of the row so I reached the end of the row and as we did earlier chain one and turn and as we did into the back loop only just like that so this tutorial I'll be explaining how I did the size small for the other sizes. You want to refer to the written pattern. The link is in the description box below, as we said earlier. So right about now, you want to make sure you have access to that. And I'm done with the row. So I'm about to explain the rest from the, um, the one I already made. This was just to explain how you're going to work out. So I'm going to place that aside. So you're going to notice that I've got the stitch markers down here. So what we're doing, the first, for the size small that is, the first 20, which is these ones right here, the first 20 rows would be considered the front portion. So you're going to work up 20 rows and after you reach 20 rows, you're going to place that stitch marker into that 20th row. And then you're going to work up another 10 rows. Once you work 10 rows, you will place a stitch marker. This is going to be the part that divides our shoulder. It's all going to make sense as we go. And then you're going to work another 20, which is going to be the back. And then another 10, which is going to be the division for the other shoulder. So if I close it up like this, you're going to notice... Oh, how do I going to explain this? Alright. You're going to notice that this is shoulder portion this is the front 
this is the other shoulder portion and this is the back i just confused myself and i think i have confused you as well so anyway assuming that you've worked up your number of rows in this case it's 20 20 40 10 10 60 assuming you've worked up your 60 rows you are gonna um work over the tops of your work this side's placing a single crochet into each and every row because we want to make it easier to connect as we're going to be working the rest of the body you want to make sure it's easier to notice so you want to make sure you go into every row placing a single crochet a trick that i use you're going to notice that you've got the in between and then the ribbed look and then the in between and then the ribbed look this is a row, the ribbed is a row, the in-between is a row, the ribbed is a row. So it's easier for you to find out since each size has uh, specific numbers. For this size, you want to make sure you have 60 single crochets going all the way around. And as you're doing your single crochets, you're going to remove the stitch markers and place them right back in there. So now I'm going to show you now how we're going to get started on the body portion. So I'm just going to move this aside. So to get started on the body, you want to make sure you've got your stitch marker somewhere, stitch marker close. So you're going to grab your yarn and we will begin with our slip knot, just like that. So for this part, it really doesn't matter um, how, much, how many you chain. If you want yours to be longer or shorter, you can really make a chain as long as you want. But if you want to follow the written pattern, for size small, you want to make sure you chain 60 plus 1, so 61. For this, I'm just going to do a chain up of 10. Plus 1, just like that. So, to begin, I'm going to start by the bottom band, and then we'll be working our way upwards. So, we're going to start by placing single crochets. So, the written pattern for size small, you're going to go into 10 stitches. Placing single crochets, I'm just going to go three. So three. Just like that. Then I'll grab my stitch marker and place it. In. So that's where we're going to We're not going to forget where that was. And then we're going to continue with our half double slip stitch. To do a half double slip stitch, yarn over, insert your hook right in there, pull up a loop. Now that we've got three, we're just going to slip stitch through, just like that. Yarn over, insert your hook right into there, pull it up. You want to hold the second loop down so you can easily slip stitch. Or, as I like to do, I like to just fold, bend my hook downwards and just pull it through. I'll do that with you again. Turn my hook upside down and just pull it through. So you want to make sure you do that going all the way up. You can pause the video so that you can work up but I'm almost there so that we can do the increase together. So to do the increase we are going to be increasing by placing two half double slip stitches into the same stitch. I just placed one and into the same stitch I am going to place another just like that and now we would normally chain one but since we're about to do another increase we're gonna do a chain up of two as I've just done right here and turn our work to get the rib look while working into the back loops only so for the chain two that we did we're gonna go into the second stitch from the hook and place a half double slip stitch there we go. Now for the rest, we're now going into the back loops only so that it gives us that knit look that I am addicted to so much. Just like that. And the single crochets as well, we are going to work into the back loops only. So holding my work up like this, you're going to notice that now it's starting to arc up, which is what we want. So for size small, you're going to increase all up until you have done 19 rows. Yes, 19 rows. I had to go off and check real quick. So this is what I'm working on right now. 
I'm just going to start on my 19th row. But as you're working it up, you're going to notice this. It's going to start doing this whole thing, and which is what we want. So I'm just going to finish off the 19th row so that now we can start connecting it to the collar together. So I've just worked my way up to my 19th row. What we're going to do now, uh, we've got a choice. We could close this and then start working on it, but really I, I don't know why I can't be bothered. So we're just going to work on to this while it's open and we'll close it at the end. So we're going to find our first 20. Uh, so the beginning which is this side right here and we will connect with a slip stitch so the 19th row that we worked will cover up for the first single crochet that we're going to be slip stitching into so into the first single crochet you're just going to connect with a slip stitch just like that to start the next row we are just gonna slip stitch into the next single crochet just like that and then we'll turn our work and start working downwards so from here on we're not doing any more increases or decreases we're just gonna be working no more rows of half double slip stitches so, you're going to notice that there are these two Vs. These two Vs are the slip stitches that we've made. Our actual stitch that we're going to start working to is the third one, which is right here. That's what you're going to do. And if you find it's going to be hard for you to uh, remember the first stitch that we made, you want to just grab that stitch marker that we removed, place it right in there so that you remember as we're coming back up that you have to work it. So you're going to work into the rest as normal, go all the way down, with the stitch marker, go into the single crochets, back loops only, work back up, and I will show you one more time how we connect, and then I'll let you connect the rest of the rows by yourself. So I'm about to finish off that row, and I've got about three more stitches to work into. Now remember the stitch marker we placed so we don't forget. I'm just going to remove that. Work into the last one. And then, like we did earlier, you find your next single crochet. This one, in this case, we will go in to connect the row that we were just working. A new row would chain one normally, but in this case, we're just going to slip stitch the next single crochet. Turn the work and then look at our work from downwards. We're gonna find two V's, these are the slip stitches we just made, meaning the V is where we're gonna be placing our first stitch, just like that. I'm gonna a stitch marker and place it into there so we don't forget. So that's all you're gonna do all the way until you reach the other stitch marker, which is gonna twist. Uh, 20 rows. So you go and do that, and I'll meet you once you have reached the 20th stitch marker. So I'm working on the last row. I'm just gonna remove my stitch marker to finish off that row. And then I'll connect the row by slip stitching. into the next single crochet just like that so since this was the 20th to start working downwards now this is where it all has to make sense you're gonna see that this was the side where we were increasing our rows this side right here and then this is the 20 normal rows on here so this side we want to mirror this side so we have to decrease 19 rows so to begin the next row this side remember instead of chaining one here we were just slip stitching but since we've slip stitched into all the 20 we're actually going to chain one and turn the first row will be a row of decrease 
to do a decrease, you can yarn over, insert our hook, insert our hook, right in there, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then insert your hook into the next stitch as well, yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch through all four loops. Uh, oh, hold on, sorry. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, insert your hook into the second stitch. I'm just going to hold those down and slip stitch into all of them, just like that. And this is my first row. And then I'll continue working all the way down until I come back up. And then we will decrease together once again and then I'll let you continue the rest by yourselves. So I've got my last two stitches remaining. I'm just going to remove my stitch marker. We'll yarn over. Insert your hook into the back loop of that one stitch. Pull through. And then insert your loop hook into the back loop of the last one. Pull through. And slip stitch just like that chain one and turn your work I'll just show you one last time yarn over into the first stitch into the back loop pull up a loop three hooks on the loop into the fourth pull up a loop and slip stitch into the rest I grab my stitch marker and place it right in there so I don't miss that and that's about it so you're going to continue to do this for 19 rows if you're doing the size that I am doing. If you're doing a larger size or a smaller size, follow the written pattern. So I'm going to let you do that. After you're done with one side, you want to do the same for the other. This is my second side because I've already finished one side. It looks a bit wonky now because we haven't closed the neck. But so far, this is what it's looking like. And then this is the other side, the 20. This in between right here are the 10 stitches. And after we close it, it should start to look something like this. So the 10 stitches will be here, which will make up the arm, and the other 10 will be on this side. So you go on doing that, finish up both rows. After you're done, both sides, um, just connect the sides, the sides, just all the way up to here on the other side on both sides connect them so that we can now start working on the neck together and if you can you can also just connect to this side or you can wait so that we do that together on camera all right so now let's connect the collar and the sides so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab my stitch marker and place it on the 10th single crochet stitch around the collar this is the short that's supposed to be the shoulder portion I'm gonna place it in there so that I don't work over that the 10th single crochet by accident so now we're gonna connect close the um, the collar so you're gonna find your yarn and I'll place it into right into the first stitch and then I'll find the corresponding stitch on the other side and move my on the other side and I will be connecting with this slip stitch just like that and slip stitching just like that so you'll be going into your next into your next stitch and the opposite stitch connect with a slip stitch I'm using a slip stitch because this is going to be taken apart again so I can use the yarn for a different project but really you can just use your yarn needle even though if you do connect with a slip stitch it's also going to give you a tight hold so you're just going to go on doing that and I will meet you once I am done so that we can chain one and cut off together so that we can connect the rest of the body so I finished and after you reach the top you just want to do a chain up of one and cut off the excess yarn we are going to weave this in at the end so not to worry about that now, to get started on closing this part, you want to get started at the bottom down here and then work your way upwards. So just like we did the collar, 
I'm going to grab my yarn, create a slip knot. And then I will find the very first stitches at the bottom and I'll connect them with a slip knot just like that and then I'll find the next ones and I'll continue connecting with slip stitches all the way up so once you reach the very top you don't wanna you should not cut because now we're gonna have to go around our work placing our single crochets so you go on doing this all the way up and I will meet you once you have just connected the very last parts, the very last stitches. So I have reached the top of my work. Now we're about to get started working around the arm. So to get started I'm gonna do a chain up of one. Just like that. So what we're going to do is place one single crochet into every ribbed space and one single crochet into the between spaces. So my first is this place right here. This is my first single crochet. After I do this, I am going to grab a stitch marker. Goodness, the chickens are making so much noise. I'm going to grab a stitch marker and place it in the first single crochet I made. So since I know that there's 19 rows, oh wait, hold on. I'm just gonna continue the chickens up. go. So since I know that there's 19 rows that I worked up on this side, it means I'm gonna have to place 19 single crochets. So that was the first one. The next would be in between. The next one would be on the, the ribbed row. Right there. The next one will be in between. And the next single crochet will be on the ribbed row. And then in between, just like that. So I'm going to continue doing that and I will meet you when I'm working to the 19th row. So that I can show you um, where we place the stitch marker on the shoulder portion. So I've just finished placing my 19 single crochets around. Now we're about to get started onto the shoulder portion. So that's my first. Since there is 10, I'm going to place my single crochets into the first five. So you want to place your single crochets into your first half. So that was my first. Two, three, four, and five. You want to grab your stitch marker and place it into the fifth. Just like that. The reason why we did this is because starting from the here, coming working our way up to this, we're gonna be placing increases, or the, up, up to up to uh, the stitch marker halfway through the arm, and then from the there going down the other side, we're gonna be placing decreases. So you need to make sure you place um your stitch marker so that you don't forget where the uh where you're halfway through your arm is. So from here on you're just going to continue placing your single crochets. Make sure that you go five. This is the stitch mark I placed as I was sewing this up. And then as you're going downwards make sure you also have 19 or whatever number that's required for your size. So I'm going to go and place my single crochets and I'll meet you once I reach the stitch marker. Don't cut off your yarn. So now I've reached... Oh my goodness! It's like they wait for me to start recording, I swear. So I've reached the, uh, the last, the 19th, so I'm just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made, just like that. So now I don't have use for this stitch marker for now. Now it's time to now actually get started on, to, on the arm. So the chain that we're going to make, this part is optional. If you want yours to be longer, you can make it longer or shorter, you can make it shorter. But what I'm doing is, since we started with a chain of 60, for this size, or 61 to be honest, we're going to do the very same thing for the arm. We're going to do a chain of 61. So you go on, make your 61, and I'll meet you right up. Okay, so I've just finished making my chain of 61. 
into the second stitch from the hook, I'm going to go in with my single crochets. So remember, it's into the first ten. You already know how to do this part after your ten. You are going to place your stitch marker and then we're going to go on doing the half double slip stitches all the way into the very first chain that you ever made which is all the way up here and then into that last one so we're going to do our first increase so you're going to wait for me we'll do that one together and then I'll show you how we're going to connect so I have just reached the last um, the last stitch chain so into that last chain we're going to place two half double slip stitches just like that and then to connect our row we're gonna find our next single crochet this one right here so now we've just connected that row just like that to begin our next row we'll single slip stitch into the next single crochet and turn our work you want to make sure you have a stitch marker somewhere up close begin the next row remember these two V's are where we did our first slip stitch and our second slip stitch so the first place to work into is this one right here so into that into the first stitch we're also going to make an increase of two half double slip stitches grab your stitch marker in case you get confused so since the first stitch is very confusing we're going to place our stitch marker into that first half double slip stitch that we made so that we don't miss it and we're working our way back up and that's all you're gonna do I'm gonna continue going down just as normal but each time you're coming back up into that last stitch place two half double slip stitches and as you're working back down into the first one you're gonna place two half double slip stitches so you're gonna go on doing that until you reach the stitch marker that we placed at the center of our uh, shoulder portion and I'll meet you there so that we can start doing the decreases together so I've got one more stitch to work into and I'll be doing that increase into there before the stitch mark so to finish the row I'm gonna connect with a slip stitch just like that and then to begin the new row slip stitch again now from here on going downwards is where we're going to start doing our decrease so to do the decrease I'm going to yarn over identify where that stitch is remember the two V's are the slip stitches we made so this is the first one right here I insert my hook pull up a loop three loops on the hook and I insert my hook into the next Stitch, pull up a loop, and I will slip stitch through all of them, just like that, and continue to work down as normal. So as you're coming back up, that's exactly what you're going to do again. Slip, half double slip stitch two together, which is these last twos before you connect. And then you're going to keep on doing that all the way down until you reach the beginning down here. And then we're going to sew the arm closed. And you want to do that for both of the arms. I've already done one with the arms. This one. This is what your work should be looking like. So you want to do that very same thing for the other side. So I'm going to go on and finish all the way down here. And I'll meet you as we sew it up together. So I've just finished sewing the sides. Working the whole sleeve. And I've sewn the sides together. And chained one and cut my yarn. So since this is the inside, I mean, if this, if you want, you can just weave this in, especially um, if your work ended at the bottom, you want to cut this and weave that in, where it's going to show, and around here, of course, you want to cut those and weave those in, and then you can turn your work inside out, the right side that is now, so that the other tails just don't show. And your sweater is all done, look at it. I tried mine on and it fits perfectly. I hope you enjoyed making this guys just like I did. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so 
and give this video a big thumbs up. Share it to those you know will definitely love it because this is, oh goodness, it fits amazingly and it looks so great. Until next time guys, bye.